Ah, chili barbecue quail. The picture alone is enough to make your mouth water and that's the point. Once you've got your catch, you're gonna bring it back to the kitchen and then take it to the table. But in the kitchen, for first time game meat cooks, this book is a terrific starting point, field to fork. And for more experienced chefs, there are some excellent tips. And today we're gonna to start with venison bites. So the field to fork venison bite recipe calls for 500 grams of minced venison. Now, that's a terrific as far as it goes, but venison is very, very lean. Healthy, lean, almost virtually fat free. But we're gonna add a little bit of fat back because with a meatball, you need the meat to be moist, otherwise it'll dry out, crumble, and fall apart. Now you wanna feed this in bit by bit, not all in one hit, otherwise the mincer will just reject it. It won't be good, but you've gotta keep your fingers out because if you let your fingers stray in there, you could end up with finger instead of venison at the end of the day. Now we also wanna make sure that we use the mincing process to mix the fat in with the venison. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of fat here. So you can see how it's starting to blend in. You've got the white of the fat and then you've got the red of the venison. And see how red that venison is? It's almost brown red, quite delicious. There's absolutely no fat in that, in that red meat at all. The recipe calls for a finely diced onion. And I'm gonna dice half an onion with my knife, but I'm gonna put the other half through here because it'll not only push all the venison and the fat through, it'll also sort of clean up and start to blend just like the fat with the venison. So there's only a couple more mechanical things to do. One is, to dice up the other half of the onion. The other is to crush the garlic and then to blend all of these ingredients. And this has got to be finely diced, so we're going to take it across and then along. And you just got to be careful, you don't want to lose your fingers on the last bit. Right, so now we're mixing again, and we're, what we're going to do is going to put in the mince first, and then we're going to give it a bit of a hand toss around, just to make sure we've got those little bits of onion, little bits of pork, all the way through. It's starting to change a bit of colour, as you can see. It's no longer that deep red, it's got a bit of a, a lightness to it. Let's put in the dry bits first, because they're going to be just sprinkled on top. Now this is the dried basil, this is the dried tarragon, in she goes. Chicken, stock powder, in that goes. And here are some breadcrumbs. <laughs> now, I'm just going to put the rest of the onion in. Remember, we minced in half of this onion. Here comes the rest of it. This is going to add some real chunkiness to it. And it might be time now to introduce a little liquid. And I think we'll start with the egg while we've still got relatively dry hands. So here's an egg. The reason you do this, put it into a bowl first, as most of you all already know, probably, is to make sure that an egg isn't going to be off and ruin the whole recipe. You just don't want that. Two tablespoons of cream. We've got some soy sauce. And this is good local Australian honey. So that's in now. And this is going to give it a very exotic, lovely taste. Once you get to this stage, and it's sort of all velvety and slippery, now's the time to actually introduce a little bit of help here. Pull it all off the sides, pull it together, and just blend it in. We need a little bit of pepper and salt, and a bit of a pinch of salt, that'll do it. And now let's crush the garlic across. And we need to make sure all of this blends firmly in, so we've got pepper, salt, and garlic in there. All of those really are seasonings, aren't they? So that's the way to finish it off. Now just as you make your balls, the best way to do it is to use something like a teaspoon or a dessert spoon, doesn't matter, just to make sure they're roughly the same size. You just form them into a little ball. So once you've got your ball set up and down on the paper so you can pick them up and put them into the hot pan, you just keep on repeating the process until you've used up all the mixture. So we have our first batch of venison bites ready for the pan. The pan's heating on the stove, that's where the olive oil comes in. So we've got olive oil heating up 
till it's smoking and what we're going to do is put these in and lightly turn them until they're lovely golden brown all over. Now I'm just going to use a spatula, any straight thing will do this to get in. You don't want to splash the oil about because that oil as you can see is pretty darn hot. So there we go. Just put them in one at a time. This is going to be absolutely delicious. Just keep an eye on the first one you put in. You can see it's starting to turn a little bit grey and white at the bottom as she cooks up. So cooking, you just heat them through, brown them off all over in a hot pan. Add a couple of dipping sauces here. This is a simple tomato ketchup and a sweet chilli sauce. Something to pick them up with and just to finish, shredded basil.